The 2-0 San Francisco 49ers getting ready for a short week. Primetime action is the New York Giants visit the San Francisco 49ers in their home opener. Will Brandon Ayuk play? Will Saquon Barkley play? All that and more coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you as always at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Big ups to all the everydayers out there. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. A very special guest on this very special Wednesday episode, which is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. And Croc, I know that uh, you're, you're, you're back from the dentist in time to play this game. We're going to talk about the injury report and it's big time athletes, big time players that can get up for an event for a game, for a podcast, even if they're not 100%. So that's what kind of gamer Eric Crocker is. I just want the folks out there to know. It it comes with the territory. Crooked mouth and all. (laughs) (laughs) And, of course, we got Mr. Nicholas Winkler joining us at Bay Area Wink on Twitter. Always a pleasure, Nick, when you join us on the Winky Wednesdays. My former radio colleague has been joining me on podcasts since before the days of Locked On 49ers. Uh, Appreciate you, man. Is there anything that you're stinking on with this uh, this San Francisco 49ers mm. team that rolls into their home opener at 2-0 and right now. Yeah, I mean, how many games are the Niners going to keep rolling Spencer Burford out there? Like, <laughs> he Uh-oh. just seems like he doesn't really know how to play right guard. I mean, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but he was the lowest rated uh, passer or uh, offensive lineman yeah. in uh, football this a, weekend, right? Yeah, for those of you who didn't, uh, who don't, have a PFF subscription, didn't listen to yesterday's show. Spencer Burford Ugh. got the dreaded 0.0 PFF grade in, in, I think it was an overall grade of like 28, and it was a pass blocking grade. 0.0, zero, zero, dot zero which is, uh, that seems nearly impossible because he wasn't that, uh, he wasn't zero out of 100 bad or anything in that game. But I think the 49ers expected a little bit more out of Spencer Burford to start the year. And this is a team that's built on the ground game, first of all, and all of their success is coming from the opposite side of the line. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't think anybody should be surprised that, that Trent Williams is pretty good at opening up holes, but all like think of, think of the first two weeks. All of Christian mm-hmm. McCaffrey's big runs came on the left side. Yeah, no doubt. And hey, correct me if I'm wrong here, too. Did Elijah Mitchell play in the football game? Did he have any snaps? <laughs> zero snaps, zero what touches. Is that? Uh, that was because he barely played in the first one. It was like, oh, that, yeah. that was weird. He didn't hardly play at all. And he played even less in week two. Oh. And that's that that's what we've talked about a lot. And Kyle Shanahan even mentioned it. He says, I got to be better at putting guys in the game. It's like, well, you're it's that's literally you're like, don't look at us. Like job. put them in the game. That's all you got to do. Like, and they're good players. Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell are good players. And I have to imagine they have to have a better plan this week to get them in the game because if Christian McCaffrey comes out and carries the ball, touches the ball 25 times and those guys don't see the field uh, that's, I mean, that's mismanagement because you're going to get your dude hurt because you need him in January. That's the whole reason he's here. If you remember back to uh, was it 2021 and Kyle Shanahan kind of wanted to do that two quarterback thing. And he was like, well, I can't really figure out how to do it because it kind of messes up the flow. And I I don't really know what to expect in the sense of how they're going to defend one quarterback as opposed to the other. So he just kind of scrapped the whole thing. Now, that's if you believe that, you've also heard some things behind the scenes where they just wanted one guy in there and they thought he was kind of undermining Jimmy Garoppolo as a leader, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, It sounds like he has issues with altering his game plan to fit someone else into it. So maybe that's why, as I talked about the other day, you know, Elijah Mitchell banged up going into a Rams game a couple years ago. He gets 27 carries, like fresh off of missing a game, broken finger, messed up ribs, messed up knee. And it's like, 
yeah, you're mm-hmm. still going to get 27 carries because you are a part of this game plan. And it seems like unless he has like, let's say, uh, you know, Coleman and Freeman, Tevin Coleman and Freeman in Atlanta, where they're just so much different and he wants them to complement each other. He has Christian McCaffrey where he's like, well, those two combined are Christian McCaffrey. So I can just play one guy the entire time. <laughs> and I don't know how to fit Elijah Mitchell into it. It's kind of odd, but, uh, you know, I've talked about it, man. If you ask, like, who has the top three running back groups in the NFL, the 49ers would be up there with Elijah Mitchell and Christian McCaffrey. And to just say we're not just going to use one guy, uh, I think that's a little irresponsible, especially if, you know, down the line we see, like, oh, man, McCaffrey's banged up. He's hurt. And now all of a sudden was like, yeah, he. how many more carries did he take? How, much, how many more hits? We know it only takes one. Did you expose him to when you have a very capable backup behind him? Two capable backups. I like Jordan Mason too. The guy looks good. Like this is this is it, it, like you said, it's mismanagement. I, I want to see, especially on a short week, a lot of Elijah Mitchell. I, I need to see Elijah Mitchell. I want him running between the tackles. Throw him the football too. See what he can do in space. Like I get it. You got your game plan for Christian McCaffrey, right? You can't just say go get another running back that's like Christian McCaffrey because there aren't any other running backs like Christian McCaffrey. So you got to do your job and have a game plan for Elijah Mitchell as well, man. Get it, get it done, Kyle. Come on. And that might, that just might be it. I think you hit on something, Croc. I think Kyle would prefer to do it where uh, instead of splitting carries last week, splitting carries this week to try to keep people fresh, I'm just going to go all in on a guy this week. And then maybe, maybe Christian McCaffrey sits a lot in this game. Mm. Right. And so that's the way he's going to do it is like, well, now I have to, sit Christian McCaffrey on Thursday. I just have to do it. So now that's, so maybe it's, maybe it's, this is the Elijah Mitchell game. So load uh, management and Jordan Mason too, is a good player. Both those yes. Mitchell and Mason, both average six yards per carry last year for the 49ers. They're not as dynamic. They're not as good as receivers. Clearly no. uh, Christian McCaffrey's a better player, but those guys are good in their own right. And they deserve to be it part of the game plan and deserve to be on the field, even with someone as good as Christian McCaffrey. I see a lot of 49 fans and they're like, well, Brandon, I, he's banged up. Uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey, he's carried the ball a ton. It's a short week. Just rest those guys. You don't need them against the Giants. I'm like, wait, hold on, okay? Mm. Like, first of all, anything can happen. They call it any given Sunday, and I know this game is on Thursday, but anything can happen, uh, you know, until you just go out there and beat them. I mean, people thought that the 49ers would just throttle the Rams. Next thing you know, it's like, dang, are we going to be down going into halftime? Like, it looked a little weird at times, right? And they figured it out. They got it together. They ended up winning uh, by seven points. Should have been more. Got the garbage time field goal at the end. But, like, I don't think you overlook any team on a, on a short week or in general, especially a team that was just in the playoffs last year. It feels like they're kind of trying to find their groove. And I know we'll dive more into the Giants uh, later this week with the crossover episode. But that is a team that was down big. And all of a sudden, came storming back. And I get that it's against the Cardinals. I understand that. The Cardinals have played teams very tough. They played teams tough in week one. The team came back and won. They played teams tough last week, and it was the Giants. And it was on the shoulders of Daniel Jones. And I know he's going to be playing without Saquon Barkley. I know we'll get into the injury report. But he threw for over 250 yards, ran for over 50 yards, had three touchdowns, Zero turnovers in the second half alone. Mm -hmm. Like he's, I get the Cowboys throttled them, but I don't think this is a game that you just say, you know what, we'll just sit our some of our best players out because they don't need to play against the Giants. I I wouldn't look at it like that. If you if the if you get in the game and you're blowing them out, then okay, you want to start the rest, guys. I understand, but heading into the game, I think you have to take them very seriously. And it wouldn't make sense to say, oh man, we. Uh, we don't want to rest a player in week one because we've seen teams come back and that's how important it is to win every week in the NFL and then turn around and be like, but week three, we'll just sit everybody. That doesn't make much sense. Right. So yeah. Right. Um, Ayuk is another one. We got to talk about Ayuk's mm-hmm. injury. We've got a report here on uh, what his prognosis is for his uh, chest injury and Saquon Barkley. He was kind of ruled out according to reports, Brian Dable, New York Giants head coach trying to rule him back in potentially for Thursday night. All that and more. Plus, we'll talk a little bit about Brock Purdy and uh, some of his misses in week two. Next. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, 
Every week, we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed fits on your roster. So let's see you. Vinny has picked out for us on eBay's guaranteed fit fantasy picks of the week. And uh, there's a lot of folks out there that uh, might be trying to figure out what to do at running back in their daily lineups. Isaiah Pacheco is not going to be there for your year long, although you might try to try to uh, work a trade out for Isaiah Pacheco. And he hasn't delivered a, a ton yet for fantasy football managers this season, but be sure to roll him out of the garage for plenty of production on the ground going up against a bad Chicago Bears overall defense in week three. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED lights, roof rack, bumpers, Whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. If you have a personal, uh, if you have a personal need for anything in your vehicle, uh, I got myself a, fl- a Fender Flare. It was super easy. It was the right fit. It had the green check. I bought it. It was here in a couple days. And I slapped that baby on my car and I was good to go. So keep your ride or die alive with ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So Saquon Barkley is a little bit banged up for the New York Giants. And Adam Schefter reported yesterday that it was going to be a three-week ankle sprain. But New York Giants head coach Brian Dable, talking on Tuesday about Saquon Barkley, said, quote, I'm not saying he's out yet. He's a quick healer. He feels a lot better today. I just talked to him. We'll see where he's at. Says they're going to take it right up to Thursday on the status for Saquon Barkley against the 49ers Thursday night. Now, um, there's a few things here. We talked about McCaffrey, and I, I probably am not the only one that saw the Nick Chubb gruesome injury from Monday Night Football. Mm. And, and then, you know, you got Saquon Barkley sprained ankle. Uh, Aaron Jones is already out. Um, J.K. Dobbins out for the year. Austin Eckler is out, right? You know, just mentioned some fantasy stuff. And it's like, the it's, it's already, the attrition is crazy in the NFL. That's the thing with running backs. That's where the value is for running, uh, where the value is low for running, back, running backs because they get hurt because of, the position they play. And I, I had I couldn't have been the only person that thought about Christian McCaffrey, short week, all the carries on the tread on his tires, and thinking, okay, this is like these are these these are huge losses for these football teams, right? And so it's just another reason, like that can happen on any play, and then you have the compounding, you know, toll on your body. So anyway, um, Saquon Barkley might play. I read that differently. I don't believe Brian Dable. I think he's a lion liar, and I think he's just trying to get <laughs> the Niners to prepare for a player who's not going to play. It would be huge if Barkley's out there because he's the best player on their team, and, and their offense, frankly, is probably going to struggle against the 49ers with or without him, but especially without Saquon Barkley. Um, but I don't know how much – like, Croc, what do you think? How much difference does it make for a team to prepare for a guy to pretend a player that – might play is actually and you know he's not going to play but you want to pretend he's going to play like is steve wilkes like well all right guys here's the game plan they're going to throw it 100 percent of the time this week so let's just practice that and then all of a sudden he shows up and he's like oh my god they have a running back i can't believe it you know like <laughs> well, does it actually make a difference because i feel like that's what's going on i think a lot of teams you are coaching against or preparing against the scheme as opposed to the player, unless the offense goes through a player, then you just kind of see, Hey, these are the things that they like to do with him, which won't take long for them to identify. And if he's in this spot or this down the distance, cool. But if he's not out there, then obviously we play it more honest and straight up. So I think you are better off spending the time uh, preparing for Saquon, which is weird because, you know, I, I just thought I saw something yesterday. He was going to be out a few weeks. Yeah, so yeah. for him to only say, no, nah, he might only be out a few days. Croc, you are way off. Um, I think you it benefits you to just prepare as if he's playing. And if he's not, like, who is their backup? You just play it almost like you're playing a preseason running back. We know who their backup is. Come on. Oh, Matt Breida. Matt Breida. Breida the Cheetah. Oh, oh man. That, that makes a difference because they are definitely different styles of running backs. You know, Breed is more one cut and he's fast and he's still fast. 
uh, as opposed to Saquon, he kind of gives you moves on top of moves. Uh, and they obviously use him a lot more in the passing game. So, yeah, that does kind of make a drastic difference. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's exactly why Dable's doing it, right? It's it's a chess game at this point for him. He's like, look, we're, our backs are against the wall. We're going into Santa Clara. We got to take on a tough 49ers defense. I'm going to try to throw a little something extra at him, try to make him work a little bit harder. Wilkes is going to have to put in a little extra time, prepare for this guy. We all know Barkley's not going to play in this football game. There's no way. If he's out there, are you kidding me? They're going to risk their whole season on a short week against the best defense in the NFL? Come on. Part of it might be Brian Dable just really hoping he can use his best player. <laughs> he knows he's That's kind it. of screwed otherwise, potentially. So uh, we'll see what that ends up looking like. Does Saquon Barkley play? I think it's pretty doubtful that he does. But Brian Dable not closing the door yet on Saquon Barkley. Uh, another one for the 49ers, a player that popped up on the injury report this week was Brandon Ayuk. And uh, we're going to go to Jack Hammer with the with the breaking news report. He says, according to his source, Brandon Ayuk had a CT scan and it revealed that there is no structural damage to no break to the clavicle area, which is what they were looking at. So it was reported as a chest injury, I think, after the game. Clavicle is what is reported here that they were looking at and that his avail- availability for Thursday night will be more about pain tolerance than about something that's actually broken there, which um, leads me to believe that Brandon is probably going to play and that, uh, you know, our good friend Toradol might might be on the scene to to help uh, alleviate any of the pain he might be feeling because I can't imagine the 49ers roll out there not playing much Christian McCaffrey and and just sitting down Brandon Ayuk like if, if they could play they're going to play and Kyle Shanahan's the kind of coach where he looks at the injury report Doc says yep he can play Kyle says cool you're playing and and that's how right. I think it's going to go. Yeah, he's not going to limit snaps or anything like that. He just seems like the kind of guy, like you said, that he gets, sets a game plan. He's like, this is what we're doing, guys. You can either play or you can sit on the sidelines or not suit up. We'll have somebody else out there. I think we see Ayuk. I think we see McCaffrey. I think it's 49ers as usual come Thursday night. Hopefully they do get a big lead and they can you know, rest these guys a little bit because th- this short week, man, it does a toll on the body, right? It, it And you don't want your guys getting banged up. It, and uh, it, the, the rest afterwards? Fantastic. Wonderful. Yes. But you got to focus on this right now, right? You got to get out there. You got to play it. If I, you can't go next man up, you know, let's, let's see what Ronnie Bell's got. Let's get some Jennings more in the mix. Let, let's go. And uh, I did just see the report. Kyle Shanahan said that Brandon, I will be at practice today. So there you go. Good start. There you go. Nothing's broken. That's great news on Brandon Ayuk, and uh, looks good that he will play Thursday against the New York Giants. I, I don't know how these players get up for a game in four years. I'm still like, I kind of like tweak something in my back while I sat on the couch seven hours and watched football on Sunday. I can't imagine getting out and, uh, and playing a game with these guys uh, after, you know, after they play a game, the physical toll that the 49ers put on their bodies, they play a, a physical brand of football. A lot of teams try to say they're physical. 49ers are physical. And uh, even for an NFL team these days. And so, man, playing on Thursday, that's that's a real ask. So, yeah, the mini buy, as I think Kyle Shanahan called, it's going to come real nice for the 49ers after this Thursday night game. Have you guys heard about uh, Christian McCaffrey, one of his offseason workout routines that he does with Laird Hamilton? No. Is Laird Hamilton yeah. the summer? No, he's the surfer, the big wave oh, surfer. surfer. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so apparently he he goes over to Hawaii and like spends time with him and they do underwater training where it's like hold your breath and really get to it. Like you're going to do all you're going to drag weights, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, all the stuff that, you know, big wave surfers need to do because they need to be able to hold their breath a super long time and be extremely strong. And and this is one of the things that that McCaffrey does in the offseason. My neighbor brought it up to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm going to go look this up. And sure enough, it's something that he loves. And he preaches, too. He says, like, this is huge for me. This is I go over there, and Laird kicks my butt, and it's fantastic. I like it. Do, yeah. Were you guys surprised that Akella Witherspoon, who wasn't known for his physicality, was, like, trying to pick fights with multiple 49ers on Sunday? Yeah. After getting He's- run over by both? He is, uh, you know, I, I watched him throughout the years. He does get a little feisty. There's been times I remember seeing him kind of him and uh, DK Metcalf and and like that whole thing. So he has a mean streak. He's, I just think it's not 100% him, you know. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's more after. I always think of 
Quame Harris. Do you guys remember Quame Harris, 49ers offensive oh, tackle? Yeah. And he was kind of accused of the same thing, being not like the, you know, the most physical player. But he would always pick fights after the play. It was like, just do that during the play. Right. Don't wait till after the play, then get a flag and push and yell at people. Push them around during the play. You actually, it's when you are allowed to do it. It's when you're supposed to do it. And I got that same vibe from Akella Witherspoon because he got blasted twice. And then he gets up and tries to talk smack. It's like, you can't talk smack to a dude who just pancaked you. Right? Yeah, that's what Akella Witherspoon was trying to do to both guys. He's like, oh, you, yeah. you, you stiff arm me? Oh, oh, Ronnie, Ronnie Bell, you, uh, you, you pancaked me? Oh, now I'm going to get up and talk to you, Bell. Just like, nope, running off the field. Hey, you know what, though? I like it. Keep that same energy. However, yep. you know, you are before something bad happens. Because there's probably times that we didn't see on film that maybe he did something good. And maybe he had that energy then. And then, okay, you got me here, which as a defensive back, when I see a guy get stiff arm, but you still make the tackle, like, mm. you made the tackle. Like, that's not a Derrick Henry throwing Josh Norman five yards this way and continue to run. Like, it's not that, right? It's like, okay, yeah, you got me. I brought you down, too. Like, to me, it's like, hey, great tackle. I always right. tell myself, like, sometimes I see these guys coming through these holes and they, boom, I mean, just run me straight over. Hey, I'm bringing you down with me. And in a stat book, that is a tackle for Eric Crocker. So, uh, you know, social media might laugh, but to me, I did my job. Talking to tackles, how about Greenlaw and Warner combining for 23 tackles in this game? Man, they were they look good out there. All over the place. I, like, they're – like I, I don't. Th this is in the 1980s, but if you told me that Dre Greenlaw like did lines of coke before the game, I would believe you. Like he's <laughs> out of his mind when he starts the game, and, and it kind of continues for most of the game. Some, and me and Croc talked about this. Is like you want to say, oh, calm down, Greenlaw, but that's part of what makes him great. That's too, who he is. is. Yeah, he's get good with the bad. That's right. Yeah. At least he's physical during the play, unlike Akella Witherspoon and Quinn Harris. All right. All right. Next, guys, I want to talk a little bit about Brock Purdy, some of the misses, and uh, and what our overall thought is of Brock Purdy going into week three in the New York Giants next. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is some of the most fun you will have playing fantasy football this season, and you can win up to 25 times your money playing Prize Picks. And it's super easy. All you do is select two or more players, and then you pick more or less than their projected stats. And place your entry. Place that entry in less than 60 seconds, and you can turn 10 bucks into 250 bucks with just a few taps. And I've got some good ones here for Thursday night football. Uh, Brock Purdy's stat line projected at 229.5 passing yards. And it, he's been around 200 plus yards, a couple touchdowns every single week. But I have a feeling the 49ers are going to blow out the New York Giants, who are traveling across the country. And those road games, long travel trips, uh, are usually it spells bad news and the Giants might be without their best player too. So uh, I don't know if the 49ers are going to be needing to light up the scoreboard late in this game and, and be chucking the ball a lot. And they might need the closers at running back the backups to Christian McCaffrey. So I don't know about Christian McCaffrey on his um, 79 and a half yard more than, because I think this might be the week that he does get some rest, but I'm sure he'll be a big part of the game plan. You know, which ones I like more than the stats. How about, Debo Samuel, 15 and a half rushing yards. If it's not going to be a CMC game and Ayuk's a little banged up, I'll give me everything for the more than projections on Debo Samuel in this one. You can play too at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. So download the app or go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. So uh, Brock Purdy has been fantastic. He was really good despite some misses in week two for the 49ers. But he wasn't perfect, and he did miss some throws. And I want to talk about the throws. because I went back and watched them, and uh, uh, I talked post-game with Croc about how they were, especially one of those misses, the Debo one, I think it was, was mm -hmm. very very reminiscent of a, a famous Jimmy G throw from the Super Bowl, right? And uh, and like some of the Jimmy G deep ball misses, the, the ball came out a little flat on some of those. And I think it's just something that 49ers fans are going to have to live with with Brock Purdy because that's just not his strength. And when a quarterback doesn't have the biggest arm, they usually have to put a little more into it. And that means that it's going to come out maybe a little bit flatter and they just have to put 
all of their their effort into a throw versus some other throws in the short to intermediate area where you can have a little bit better touch. And, you know, and, and it doesn't mean he's a bad quarterback. It just means that's not going to be the strength of his game. So I don't know if we should expect Brock Purdy as even though he's more aggressive than Jimmy Garoppolo and will make some bigger plays with his arm. I don't know if we should expect those big plays 40 plus air yards down the field to be necessarily a strength for Brock Purdy and something he's going to hit a ton of in his career, even though he'll probably not go over three every time. But on the other side of that, guys, I don't know how you feel about it, but I love it too. go miss deep balls. That's fine because you're going to hit some too. And you still put up 30 points and you might have put up 45 if you hit a couple of them. Well, and not only will you hit on some, you know, even if you don't hit, you might get a penalty. And we saw yeah, that, right? In the end zone. The end zone uh, deep ball to Debo Samuel is kind of a corner route. And the defensive back wasn't looking back and kind of ran into Debo Samuel. Now, I've seen some funny things on that where some people were like, yeah, if the DB wasn't there, like that ball is on the money. Like that's a perfect throw. And it's like, well, he kind of was there. And luckily he didn't look back because he beat Debo. He, yeah. he beat the ball to Debo which I don't know if he was expecting. So that's the thing when I always talk about. You, you don't need a big arm until you need a big arm. And if he wanted that to be a clean touchdown pass, then, all right, you put some on it, and it gets on Debo fast, or you throw it a little bit sooner. And maybe he just has to learn to do that, which Peyton Manning was great at that, especially later in his career. Now, Brock has a better arm than late years Peyton Manning. But one thing that Manning did great was – he knew that he could only throw the ball 40 yards, so he was going to throw the ball as soon as he said, like, he's going to throw it, put that touch on it. Romeo, <laughs> chill. All right, so he's going to throw it, put that, put that touch on it, and it's going to drop right into the bread basket for the receiver. Maybe Purdy has to realize, I don't have the biggest, strongest yeah. arm, so let me just throw the deep ball with a little bit more anticipation so I don't have to really get it into a tight space. I love that, Croc. I think you're exactly right on that. I think it, it comes down to touch, right? And it comes down to feel. And Peacock, you were right, too. Like, it was fun to see those big passes, right? It was fun to see him throwing it. You're like, oh, you kind of hold your breath when the ball's in the air because you haven't seen it so far this year. He hasn't really challenged down the field that far. And you're like, oh, he was open. You know, both times, both times. You know, the, the, the two, like you said, the Debo. And then was it Ayuk on the right side or who who was – down the, yeah, down the three, right side. One like, Debo, one Ayuk, and I think one Jennings that were no, all. No, oh, actually right. two Jennings, though. He, two we Jennings. always forget. He did connect yeah. with Jennings on one. He hit Great Jennings catch. on one. Yeah, let him go up and make a play on the ball. Um, yep. And let, let your guy make a play. I like that, too. And the I, you're exactly right to Croc on the corner one. I forgot to bring that throw up. I'm glad you did because That's that was, huge. you know, he had to get it out earlier. That, that was, you know, it's like it's fine with if it's accurate, but if you don't throw it, it with the right timing, and, you know, it's what we saw in the NFC Championship game on the on the fateful play when Brock Purdy got hurt. Like, the play was there. It was open. He needed to throw it. And that throw actually should have happened before he ever got hit. He, he might have still got hit, but he just wouldn't be here. The ball would have been let go, and he had him open, you know. So, um, still, you know, the, the, the timing is such a timing-based offense. And he Brock Purdy's not perfect. Don't expect Brock Purdy to be perfect. Uh, but he's still really good even when he's not perfect. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from this game is the 49ers are so good everywhere. They have so many players that can make plays for them on offense. They can try some big plays and try to put even more points up on the board. And I like Brock Purdy being aggressive, even if he misses, and he's going to miss some, and that's okay. That's not going to be the biggest strength of his game. I I think the one to Jawan Jennings uh, that he missed kind of over the middle, I can live with that one because that that was a tougher throw. Just with some of the bodies, got to get the ball up and down. Yes, he has a window there. But, like, you miss on that, I understand. I don't care who you are. You can't miss on that one, the Debo and the IU. Like, they are yeah. wide open. And the go ball, the go ball, you know, deep ball is the lowest percentage pass a quarterback can attempt. Usually a receiver has to uh, adjust to it. A lot of times uh, both the receiver and the defensive back – have some kind of time to adjust to the ball while it's in the air so it becomes contested. Like, typically, that's why it's low percentage. Not because the guy is running wide open by five yards and you just airmail him, like, multiple times in the game. Like, you typically don't quite see it to that extent. So, uh, the Jennings one on the post, or whatever that was, bang eight, I'll give him a pass on that. The other ones, they are so wide open, you have to make those throws. And well, find a way to make them. Pers- Go ahead. Go ahead, Wayne. Well, especially with the receiving core like the 49ers have, right? Big, strong, physical receivers. Like, they give those guys a chance to go up and make a play on the ball. You saw Jennings do it. 
Right, he went up, he got it, he, he looked good. I, I, you can do that. You know Debo can do that. And George Kittle, he's proven time and time again that he can do that. Like, take a little bit off it maybe, Brock. Maybe I get it. You you don't want to throw an interception, right? So you do throw it a little bit deeper uh, when you got a guy running free like that. But give your guy a shot. There's no chance if it's five yards past him. If it's five yards under, maybe he adjusts. Maybe he makes the play. Yep, uh, I, I totally agree. And, you know, if – you know yourself too, if you're Brock Purdy and you know how you can and how you have to throw a certain pass. So you, if, if you have to throw it flatter, you're going to have to put them off, put it on him more and not lead him as much, you know? And if you, mm-hmm. if you can, then try to get a little bit more air under it. Um, so easier said than done. Things are moving right. fast out there. Uh, but all in all, as long as he's not missing too many of those and it doesn't become a problem and he's not throwing the ball, the other team, which he wasn't last week, then I'm good. How, how many times have we said with the 49ers quarterback, uh, especially Jimmy Garoppolo or other, take that a shot. He, he, well, not even taking a shot, that he didn't play his best ball, you know, and didn't have a turnover, though, right? Like, usually, mm. if Jimmy Garoppolo, we're talking about him having a bad game or not as great of a game as we're used to seeing, shoots, I think even his best games involved in interceptions. So, definitely yeah. the games were, that weren't his best also involved picks. With Brock Purdy, Zero interceptions, like zero turnovers. So, yeah. uh, we're, again, in Peacock, you talked about it. If we are talking about this kid who, you know, he's continuing to get better and all that, and the worst game we've seen so far from an accuracy standpoint, he still didn't turn the ball over. I think that's – I'll yep. take it. I'll take it 10 all times. Day. <laughs> and you put up 30 points, I'll take it. You, and, yeah, and we always talked about the thing with Jimmy too, like almost every playoff win, in fact. It's like, oh, well, they still they won despite Jimmy. Like Jimmy despite. didn't do much to help him win that game, but they still won the game, right? And and then that's how good the 49ers are right now. And, and obviously the defense, if there was any worries coming into the year, feeling good about that. We haven't seen the best of Nick Bosa yet. Uh, you get the New York Giants coming in on a short week. Uh, I think they might. Uh, it's 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 generally a scheduled loss for a team coming across the country. Home opener for the 49ers, just terrible scheduling for the New York Giants this weekend. Might be without their best player. Uh, Wink. We talked defense. We Wish talked watch. offense. Yeah, I mean, special teams. Let's go. Wish watch. Again, four punts, two inside the 20. Had a 67-yarder. The, the guy's a stud. He continues. And let's let's give a shout-out to Moody, too, the special teams here. He made all six of his kicks and one from 57. Like, that was really fun to see. Well, you know, Moody's not going to be making six for six kicks if this holder Mitch Wisnowski Boom. and the uh, the long snapper Tabor Pepper aren't putting them right there for him on a play. It's a finely tuned machine right there. And hey, Thursday night I'm going to the game, so if anybody wants to to hook up, my DMs are open. Let's go. At Bay Area Wink is where you can find Nicholas Winkler, and Croc and I, of course, will be back tomorrow. Patricia Trena of Locked On Giants crossover style, and then we're already here, nearly game day, 49ers. New York Giants, and of course, Croc will have it all broken down for you as we do every day on Locked On 49ers. Talk to you then. See you. Subscribe to this video.